ultimately the pros for me stop at <laughs> a PlayStation handheld, another PlayStation handheld. And all, this is where all the cons come in for me. What's up everybody? I hope you're having a fantastic day. So PlayStation CEO Jim Ryan said this in their last voyage into the handheld market. PlayStation Vita was brilliant in many ways. An actual gaming experience is great, but clearly it's a business that we're no longer in now. So it was assumed that PlayStation was out of the handheld market, at least for the near future. That was about four or five years ago. And in the past few days, it's just been confirmed that PlayStation is back in the handheld market. And from the reports, there are some things that I like and some things that I don't like. But we're currently at 380 subscribers right now. We thank you all for the support. We're making a hard push to get to 1,000 subscribers before the year's up. So if you're watching the video and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, really appreciate you if you did. Thank you. But I have the article pulled up. Let's take a look and then we'll talk after. So this one's coming from Forbes. PlayStation's Q-Lite is not true competition for the Switch or Steam Deck uh, by Paul Tassi from Forbes. Uh, while I've previously made the argument that Sony should get back into the handheld game, the rumored Q-Lite hardware was not precisely what I had in mind. As reported by Tom Henderson, the idea is to plant a large screen inside two halves of a PlayStation controller. A good start, perhaps, but it's the actual functionality that's somewhat questionable. Unlike the Nintendo Switch and Steam Deck, which run games natively, the Q-Lite would essentially function as an extension of the PS5 itself, and the way it plays games is purely through remote play, which requires A, a constant internet connection, and B, a PS5 you already own. And this is you know, we're getting into stuff that I don't like. Uh, ultimately, the pros for me stop at <laughs> a PlayStation handheld, another PlayStation handheld. And all, this is where all the cons come in for me. Um, is there a market for this? To some extent, maybe. Uh, I think absolutely not. Because <laughs> you can use your phone, you use a tablet, you can use um, literally anything else. Uh, instead of buying, you know, a couple hundred dollars uh, worth of hardware just to have, you know, a PlayStation attached to it. I, I don't know about that. And you can use it to play games on a tablet or a laptop screen, blah, blah, blah. Re uh, what this feels like is just a rebrand and repackaging of a concept that already exists. And because it's based on remote play, not full cloud gaming, it may be somewhat less reliable as it requires not just connection to the cloud servers, but your literal active PlayStation back at home. This is true. Uh, the second question is price. The Nintendo Switch is at $300, which is crazy, you know, to be able to get the, the functionality of that, being able to play it on screen and then just tap it and get it and go. It's so dope. Uh, the Steam Deck is usually uh, four to $500. Steam Deck has really come in and made humongous waves in the handheld market. Um, I don't really see them like being, being beat at this point. I haven't got one. I plan on getting one in the future. Uh, but that comes with the ability to be a self-contained device, not based entirely around streaming slash remote play. Sony already has, <laughs> yeah, right. Sony already has already recently been overpricing hardware. See the recent uh, PSVR 2, which costs more than the PS5 itself. So I do want, and, and with that, I'm wondering if they're pricing that at what it actually costs to make it, to, to actually turn a profit off of it. Because we all know that the hardware is underpriced so they can make money off of the games that they sell. So I wonder if they're pricing the PS VR 2 uh, at what is actually priced, I guess, MSRP, I guess, if that's the thing for gaming consoles. So, uh, so I do wonder what this thing would cost if it's essentially an accessory for the PS5 rather than a true handheld player like the Vita and PSP used to be. Um, uh, uh, underrated devices they were. Um, they were the best handhelds at the time, in my opinion. Uh, obviously, <laughs> Nintendo kicked the kicked their butts up and you know three ways to Sunday. It was embarrassing. But if you were to ask me, what's the better device? I would always go with the PSP or the Vita, for sure. Um, I can say I'm terribly shocked that Sony went down this path, given that creating a self-contained PlayStation handheld again would be much much more difficult it could require things like uh different SKUs for games uh for game from publishers 
Oh, sorry. I misread that entire thing. I can't say I'm terribly shocked that Sony went down this path. Given the, that creating a self contained PlayStation can be much more difficult, it could require things like different SKUs for games for publishers, which they wouldn't want. Uh, but because this is an extension of a PS5 and purely based on the internet remote play, uh, that doesn't really put it in the same competitive league as the Switch or Steam Deck. Really, the case is instead, do you want to pay 100 150 250 uh, to do remote play on this thing instead of the tablet laptop you already own. And I'm sure there's a terrible, terribly compelling case for, for that at the moment. <laughs> well, oh, and I'm not sure. I keep missing these words. I'm not sure there's a terribly compelling case for that at this moment. Uh, we'll see what the final designs are for this thing and its full list of features and functionality. But as a purely remote play device, I'm not sure this has a chance of going toe to toe with the market handhelds. Now, this reflects my sentiments exactly. If you were to ask me, I think PlayStation's uh, handhelds were the best of the best, even better than Nintendo at the time. But there are a number of reasons why they failed. I want to say one of the reasons why, and this is coming from Great Game Rant, um, they had memory cards that were overpriced and you know people didn't want to pay for those. Now, if and when they jump back into the handheld market, there's strings attached with remote play and not much upside. However, this is very early reporting, and when they do decide to unveil it, we could be looking at a totally different device. But that's all I've got for you today. Really appreciate you guys stopping by. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video or found it informative. And don't forget to share it out. There should be another video popping up. In the meantime, keep it casual. Peace.